I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology and um, we're going to talk about heredity today. Heredity is an important concept in biology. We look at heredity to show us, you know, things like why do we look alike? Why do we look like our parents? And then also we look at that and we say why do we look so different you know we have we have a lot of different friends and and they don't look exactly like us and why would that be and we also extend that um, to other organisms so we look at plants and animals and you know some plants look very similar to each other we have several different varieties of wheat and they look similar but they have minor differences and then but as far as all the plants in the world, there are extreme variations in their genetics. And um, we look at the animals the same way. You know, fish are so different from cows and we want to know why do they have those differences. And heredity is where we start to answer those questions that we have. So we're going to start off with Gregor Mendel, and he is the father of genetics. It's, um, he did experiments in the 1800s and figured out a lot of genetics, even though he didn't have genetic technology. Um, he didn't really have an understanding of DNA like we have now, but he did experiments with pea plants, and he was able to figure out quite a bit about genetics just by doing these experiments and evaluating what happened in the actual plants. He um, grew thousands of pea plants, and so you see in this picture right here, these are um, pea plants. This is not Mendel. Okay, that's not Mendel because I don't think he ever wore shorts. Um, Mendel was a monk in the 1800s. Um, monks lived in abbeys and they um, didn't, they, they didn't, I shouldn't say they didn't have a lot to do, but you know, by today's standards, they didn't have a lot to do. And Mendel was really in charge of the gardens. And so he spent a lot of time doing these experiments and the amazing thing about it was that Mendel, he was very meticulous. He kept very good records. And so he was really a good scientist because he, he noted everything that happened and he did his experiments in a very controlled manner. So what he did was he cross-pollinated these pea plants. And so he would remove the male parts from the flower and he would take the pollen from the male parts and he would put it onto the female parts of a different flower. And that way he would control the fertilization of the plants. He didn't let them just um, fertilize naturally. He was very good about controlling that fertilization so that he would know exactly what kind of plants were fertilizing the other plants. So why did he choose pea plants? Well, they had seven characters that were direct contrasting traits. And what that means is that the pea plants, they either had a purple or a white flower, okay? So two variations, a direct contrast. They didn't have pink flowers. Um, they didn't have yellow or orange flowers. They either had purple or white. Same with seed color. It was either yellow or green no other colors involved there. The seed shape was either round or wrinkled. Pod color was either green or yellow. Pod shape was either smooth or bumpy. The flower position on these was either mid stem or at the end of the stem. And the plant height was either tall or short. And so Mendel studied these different traits and he cross fertilized um, based on these different traits. So he might cross fertilize a green pod colored plant with a yellow pod colored plant so that he could see what would happen. Now what he found out, what he did in his experiments was he crossed what, what's called a true breeding plant. So he looked for a plant that he knew was a purple flowered plant. And then he crossed it with one that only produced white flowers. So he crossed a true breeding purple flowered plant 
with a true breeding white flowered plant so that he could see what he got. And in that first generation of offspring, what we call the F1 generation, he noticed that 100% had purple flowers. So he was a little surprised by that result, but he found that over and over, no matter what kind of cross he did, if it was a true breeding with a true breeding, when he crossed those, he always ended up with 100% of one of those variations. So then he would take this generation, so the F1 generation, and he would cross those to produce a second generation. All right, so he would take this plant and cross it with this plant in order to get to the F2 generation, the second generation. And what he found out was that he would have a three to one ratio consistently. No matter what kind of cross he would do, he would get a three to one ratio. So he would get three of that trait that he saw in the first generation, but he would get one of that trait that was going back to the original parent generation. So he would get three purple to every one white. And he, he did this experiment thousands of times. He did this with the flower color, all right? So he would take that original parent generation, cross the purple with the white. He would end up with 100% purple, but in the F2 generation, he would end up with that three to one ratio. He did this with seed color the yellow to the green. Well, the first generation, the F1, he ended up with 100% yellow. And then when he crossed the F2, he ended up with the three to one ratio. He did this with seed shape. He crossed round with wrinkled. The first generation, he had 100% round the second generation, he had a three to one ratio, round to wrinkled. He did this with pod color, pod shape, flower position, and plant height. And he basically got the same result every time. And what that told Mendel, what he got out of that, was that there's a dominant form being passed on, and there's a recessive form being passed on. And that was one of the most important things that Mendel gave us because even though he didn't have a lot of genetic technology, he did these thousands of experiments and he figured out that there are dominant traits and there are recessive traits.